Hi everyone, this is Phil Travis. This announcement is for American History Part 1. It is week 9. This week we have, a, we have a test, our second test. It covers all the material in the class since the first test. So just this particular section. So make sure this week, make sure you're going through the readings, going through the recorded lectures that I provide for you. Use the study guide as your, as your guide for preparing for the test. I have limited the assigned readings for this week because I want you to make sure that you're as prepared as possible for the test. And the test is just like the last test in terms of its size and in terms of the type of like questions that you should expect. So you use the study guide, prepare during the week. I recommend taking the test towards the end of the week to ensure that you're as prepared as you possibly can be when it comes time to take that test. For this reason, I'm limiting the reading for this week. There's no additional primary source reading. And more or less, your reading for this week is effectively the same reading as last week. I want you looking at the Eric Foner reading, chapter 9 and 10. So less reading this week. I want you to focus on preparing for the test. Our topic for this week is a very interesting one. Our topic for this week is the Jacksonian age, or the era of Jackson. Andrew Jackson became president in 1828, in the election of 1828. It was inaugurated in 1829. He was a controversial political figure. Some old founders in the United States, like Thomas Jefferson, regard, regarded Jackson as somewhat uncouth. Jefferson did not like Andrew Jackson being associated with the party that he had founded. But nonetheless, Andrew Jackson is elected as a Democratic Republican. And he serves two terms as American president. He was a highly controversial president in many respects. There were a number of controversies, the bank war, for example, being one of them. You'll read about these in the reading for this week. He was actually censured by Congress during the height of, of controversy during his presidency. So he was a very controversial president. However, Andrew Jackson is also a president who is highly influential. And he is associated in some, in some cases with an entire era of American history, the age of Jackson, a period of time in which, um, for about two decades, in which American presidents often sought to fashion themselves around the appeal of Andrew Jackson. Of course, Andrew Jackson was a, a military hero from the War of 1812, and he served two terms as American president. He was... Ultimately, uh, his vice president, Martin Van Buren, would serve after his presidency. And then William Henry Harrison would be elected as a Whig president and would, sure, would, ser would serve the shortest term of any president because he got sick giving his inauguration in a, in a cold rainstorm in March and got pneumonia and died. Though William Henry Harrison, too, was a, was a war hero from the War of 1812. Um, and, of course, he would be succeeded by his vice president, John Tyler. The last Jacksonian president was James K. Polk, who became president in the late 1840s during the, uh, well, he was president during the crisis over Texas and the Mexican-American War, which we'll be talking about in subsequent weeks, particularly as we get up to a discussion uh, of the lead up to the American Civil War. Andrew Jackson became president and an election that has been regarded by some historians to be one of the most sort of dirty campaigns of all time by Jackson and his opponent, the president, John Quincy Adams. Both campaigns were pretty, were pretty nasty in terms of how they attacked the other. So just so you know, you know, underhanded sort of dirty politics designed to, you know, use questionable accusations and tactics to accuse and smear your opponent is not a new phenomenon in American politics. Some political elections are more, are sort of, sort of dirtier than others. And the 1828 election is often regarded by American historians as perhaps the most controversial. So controversial and dirty sort of politics, to, for lack of a better term, is not a brand new thing in American, in American history. Jackson is often associated with one of the first steps in an expansion of American democracy as well. And um, he, he, he is president during a time in which we see 
the right to vote expanded to more people. In this case, we're talking about um, uh, poorer white men. Of course, it takes the Civil War for the vote to be extended to, to all men in the country. And of course, it's not until the 20th century where, federally speaking, the vote was extended to women as well. But one of the first steps to expanding the right to vote occurs during uh, the presidency of Andrew Jackson. So just to reiterate, before I get to the factoid, reading chapter 9 and 10, we have a test this week. Uh, make sure you prepare for that test and take it towards the end of the week. Here's the factoid. Remember, bonus points. So if you're worried about a test score, send me the factoid. No later than Wednesday by midnight, you get bonus point for every one of those. And I add those to a test score at the end of the term. In a class like this, that can be a difference of maybe three percentage points on a final grade. Here's the, here's the, the factoid. Andrew Jackson was a notorious dueler. He uh, was, he was a, a, a big advocate of honor, of sort of Southern honor. And during his time period, dueling, particularly in the South, was a way that individuals often sought to maintain or, or, uplift or uphold their honor. So if you were insulted personally or your wife was insulted or something like this, in the early 1800s, it was not entirely uncommon, depending on where you're at, to be challenged to a duel. The duels at that time typically used, though there were rules, there's a rules of engagement to dueling at this time. And of course, it was a, a big deal. Certain states outlawed it. Other states didn't outlaw it uh, for longer periods of time. But uh, there were rules to, to dueling, and typically the person who's challenged to a duel could choose the type of weapon that would be dueled with, that would be used in the duel. And this leads to some funny stories about Abraham Lincoln, who did not believe in dueling. little side here, one time Abraham Lincoln was challenged to a duel, and he said, 15, he said what did he say, cow patties at 15 paces, I believe it was, because he did not believe in dueling, and because he was challenged, Abraham Lincoln had the right to choose the weapon. Anyway, here, here's the factoid. Andrew Jackson was notorious for, you know, being involved in duels. Some reports had him involved in maybe a hundred duels in his life. And the typical weapon that was used in these duels was a handheld, like, musket that was smooth bore, large caliber ball and smooth bore mus musket. And the ramifications of that, these are very inaccurate weapons. And so just because you were involved in a duel did not mean people necessarily died. A duel could go on for a number of rounds. And people were killed in duels, but not always the case. Sometimes you might have four rounds of a duel and no one would get injured and the other guy would say, okay, my honor is upheld and the duel would be over. Other cases, an individual might get wounded and the other individual would say, my, my honor is now upheld and the duel is over. There are cases where individuals dueled and the other individual was shot dead, um, especially when we saw more advanced weapons like rifles being used. And then, of course, dueling became an almost guaranteed uh, event where the combatants were killed. But here's the factoid. Andrew Jackson actually carried a slug, a bullet ball, uh, within like upwards of a few centimeters of his heart until the day he died. He was in a duel that he survived, but he was wounded in prior to becoming president. And in that duel, he received a wound that almost hit his heart. They couldn't get the ball out because of where it was at. And so Andrew Jackson lived to the end of his days with, uh, with a musket ball, basically, just a matter of maybe centimeters from his heart. So that's the factor for this week. Andrew Jackson dies with a musket ball from a duel, just a matter of maybe a centimeters or maybe an inch from his heart, the prolific dueler of, of his age. All right, everyone, let's have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions.